fantastic view of the, the global nature of these clouds, and uh, I think it gives you an idea that Mars really is a, a very, very dynamic planet. <coughs> Winter and, uh, and also the temperatures, you talked about 40 degree differences from what to what? There are really are two distinct climates of Mars. There's a climate of Mars when Mars is nearest to the sun, and there's a climate of Mars when Mars is furthest from the sun. We have two uh, pictures of Mars here. On the left, we have a color compos composite, both taken by HST on March 30th. You can see we're back to the cold, cloudy state. The dust has been swept clear by the clouds. We have a very, very cloudy atmosphere. Is that it makes it a much more beautiful planet, a much more Earth-like planet. At least for half the year, you have skies that have some parallel to what you see on the Earth. Uh, you have a, a, a sky in, in the, the dust storm period is it's something like a very smoggy Los Angeles sky, uh, perhaps beautiful in its own way. But I would say that the clouds and the <laughs> and the uh, <laughs> the clouds and the very dark uh, uh, bluish sky, I think, uh, make it much more Earth-like, at least uh, uh, emotionally. Showing the north polar cap of Mars as it actually shrinks as I've described it. This last state, this summer state, is actually the residual state. Minimize the signature of the clouds on the area. And now we'd like to zoom in on uh, this particular feature called Cerberus. And under current uh, observations, all we see are three small fuzzy spots, not terribly impressive. Zooming back 20 years, this is what Viking saw. This was a feature about 1,500 kilometers across, roughly the, the size of the state of California. Well, as spectacular as these images are, and you've all seen them, they also provide us an unprecedented capability to actually forecast and understand something about the atmosphere of Mars before we get there. And we're at the uh, juncture in human history where we have two spacecraft speeding towards the red planet. at Mars and plunge directly into the atmosphere behind an aeroshell, which was shown there. The air shell drops off. It slows the spacecraft um, by interaction in which it dips into the uppermost atmosphere at about 100 to 110 kilometers, as shown in this video clip. And it uses its uh, spacecraft, its uh, solar panels, as you see, as wings in this uh, rarefied upper atmosphere to slow its uh, having these Hubble observations over a long period of time punctuated by distinct observations both from the surface of Pathfinder looking up through the sky and of MGS arriving and looking down through it will provide us tremendously greater understanding of how the climate on Mars fluctuates. The planet. Uh, this is our full color image. And I'd like